entertainmentbuddha.com. Everybody, it is that time of the week or month or day, whenever you're listening to this, to hear the latest episode of the Star Wars Time Show from your friends at entertainmentboo.com. So, Nick and I are back. It's less than a week away from the debut of The Last Jedi, so naturally we're going to dedicate this cast to, can you guess? The Last Jedi. I know, we're so smart. And we're so... In tune yeah. with pop culture, right, Nick? I mean, oh, oh yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> it's a pretty hard decision for us to make right now. I mean, we're six days out from the movie. Do we talk about the Last Jedi? Do we talk uh, yeah, about? I think, no, yeah, so why well. not? <laughs> oh no, let's talk about um, X Wing, the PC game from like 1990. It was a good game, dude. It was, <laughs> but really not worth talking about right now because we have a brand new Skywalker saga movie coming out less than a week away. Like I said, and yes, it is less than a week away because. It, You're not a real fan if you're not seeing this movie Thursday night, right, Nick? Yeah, I mean, Thursday night is definitely the... I mean, honestly, what's wrong with you people? real fan night. Come on, guys. I have my 7 o'clock show, 3D, all ready to go. All I have to do is walk into the theater, and and my seat is there. If you guys still haven't gotten tickets yet, pre-order them now. Good luck. Good (laughs) luck. I'm sure that there's some tiny theaters out there that aren't sold out. Like if you live in the sticks, maybe. Yeah, I, I, I think still that's yeah. I think that's your only bet. I think any major city at this point, you're not getting a screening Thursday night. There's no way. More than likely, that's not going to happen. Also, for you people going out on Thursday night, you, if you plan to go out in cosplay, if you plan to go out with props, check your theaters to make sure that they're not going to kick you out if you bring right. like a or, or just leave the props at home like we all yeah. love a good lightsaber but you just want to see the movie you don't want any bullshit yeah so just you know what just wear wear the robe wear the tunic wear a mask or something but may, maybe leave the blasters and the uh, sabers at home yeah i know for sure regal cinemas will not allow you in if you're holding a fake gun or a lightsaber prop or anything like that so just be yeah. be aware. Use the force, people. Use the force. So anyways, uh, as, as you well know, if you are a real Star Wars fan, we've we got a major event coming up here. And, you know, we're, we're recording this on Friday, December the 8th. So you'll probably hear it maybe Tuesday or Wednesday of the following week, which is going to be very close to the launch of Star Wars The Last Jedi. And naturally, we're super excited, but we, we still have some little tidbits we want to talk about this week. So... On today's show, we're going to start with a revelation that we may see a new color lightsaber in The Last Jedi. We're also going to talk about a new very, 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 right Nick, very times 10 spoilerish TV spot that has been airing on uh, Pro Sports here in America during their commercials. Tonight, I saw it four times, Jeez. and I do think it's troublesome because there is a, a very... Um, plot revealing scene that takes place in the very last shot so we're going to talk about that <laughs> excuse me i'm not getting emotional I've, I've had the flu and i just lost my breath a bit there um we're going to talk about that and then we're also going to wrap things up kind of predicting what we expect to see in the last jedi or, or maybe what we want to see we can't go too much into that because i know nick and myself we could literally probably spend three hours uh so we're just going to throw out a few things maybe talk about an article i wrote today about uh, what I believe to be the definitive proof of Ray's parentage, but obviously we'll see how that actually plays out next Thursday. But I honestly think this theory you can take to the bank. So maybe we'll get there, maybe we won't. But Nick, the first thing we do want to talk about, brother, are the possibility of a new lightsaber hue in The Last Jedi. Yeah, this is a pretty big reveal, obviously. Um, Huge. Huge. Aside, aside from Mace Windu and the prequel trilogy, lightsabers Which, have been... to me, <laughs> I still, you know, we've talked about this, Nick. I, I just, I ultimately hate why Mace had a purple. And only because of the reason he got purple. It was literally because Sam Jackson said, George, I want a fucking purple lightsaber. Yeah, he's like, George, I'm a pimp. I know there's yeah. red, green... And then, you blue, know, it, it, but I am. Th- we're talking. This is George Lucas, this guy who created everything. 
Yeah, and he just come on. And that just shows you how George would just cave. It it seems to certain people. It's like he didn't even like at least to the talent. Like he didn't want to even challenge that. Like no, this is my world. This is it. He's like, okay, it makes no sense, but sure. Yeah, yeah. He 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 wasn't like no Sam. You get green or blue, and you fucking deal with it. Yeah, get over it. I mean, uh, he, it's like he didn't even realize the power he had. And here it comes. Tangent alert. Tangent alert. Tangent alert. <laughs> I forgot to send this link to you, Nick, and it's my bad because you need to see it. But um, Rocket Jump this week, which is a YouTube channel ran by Freddie Wong, YouTube legend. Uh, great guy. I've met him. It's, I mean, just literally a fun channel, fun dude. But they put out a video essay on – how the edit of the first Star Wars movie essentially made it the phenomenon that it became and, and then resulted in the first trilogy, the prequel, and obviously the multi, 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 multi billion dollar juggernaut that it is now. But if you watch this video, it shows you that, yes, George Lucas gets all the credit in the world for cooking this shit up in his head. No one's taken that away from him. I'm not. I mean, I respect the guy. He's a living God. I mean, the, the the shit that he has given me in my life, whether you agree or not, that someone should get that invested into sci-fi, whatever. But, I mean, the, the guy changed lives and literally will go down in history as a figure that's talked about, like, um, uh, uh, Plato, any of the other history, you know, historically significant writers in the history of humans, right, Nick? I mean, Oh yeah. I mean, the guy is a master storyteller that we can see, you know, with the star Wars trilogy, the original trilogy prequel is a little shaky. And then even his work on the Indiana Jones movies and and others. I mean, he is a great talent. Nobody can deny that. Here's the deal though. And and Nick, when I send you this video and I hope you watch it, you'll see that his first cut of star Wars, honestly, we would have walked out in the first 10 minutes. Was it that slow? It is, dude, it is a disaster. And this video breaks down why it was so bad. But also, they highlight how amazing the editors were in turning it into what it became. Because their their argument was essentially, if, if this would have released under George's cut, it would have been a massive fucking flop failure. I mean, it would have been horrendous. Yeah. And when you watch the what they imagined the opening sequence was, you just go like, what? And all it does, and I sent it to other hardcore Star Wars guys, and both of them said, well, dude, this just goes to show you when George is in complete control, it's no good. Oh, yeah. I mean, right. I mean, we, we, we had the <laughs> prequels, right, Nick? I mean, that that's proof enough alone but this shows you that when he was in direct control on star wars the first one the end cut was, was a disaster i think and it what, took other people to refine his vision to give us the amazing movie that spawned what we love today i think what the big problem with george is and this is something that i brought up during celebration is that he is he, he is great at coming up with these ideas with these storylines and stuff like that but what he can't seem to to realize is that there is his vision and there is his story that he's come up with but that doesn't always translate well to film and there was a moment in the in the panel that he was doing at star wars celebration this past year where somebody was talking to him and and somehow they got into the prequels and there was some slight you know he was a little flustered by um, what they were talking about and he kind of got frustrated and he says you know there are a lot of people out there who don't like the prequels because of the story but that's just the story and that kind of disturbed me a little bit because I mean he is the creator of the story so for him so he's essentially admitting that the story sucked yeah well he what what really happened was is like he couldn't see past the fact that like he created this and he can also refine it. He's just like, whatever I came up with initially is what we have to go with. Like he, he has, it didn't seem to realize that he could like refine his ideas, especially once people gave him feedback. The thing is though, uh, even his idea of the prequels, I think if they were executed in a different manner, still would have worked. I mean, his core concepts were legit, right? Yeah. The core concept was The way they played out, you just scratch your head like, what 
This hey. is literally this is literally how you're explaining how Darth Vader came to be. I mean, yeah, this was, is the guy. It was a little weird to see. I mean, I obviously within Star Wars, you're always going to have a political factor that has heavy heavy weight on the story. Sure, regardless and, and it, I think the Senate had a, a perfect role in those movies. It's just the way it all played out was fucking shit. Yeah, it's it, it. He just didn't execute it well, and I don't know if that was because he it, had complete control essentially. Yeah, I mean he he directed, wrote it, and then he uh, and edit. I thought he. I'm pretty sure he, he was in on the editing too. Yeah, he was in on it. I don't know if he was listed as the editor uh, in the final cut, but he probably did have a hand in the editing bay. But it's just, yeah, I mean, when, and I think that goes for a lot of people, though. Aside from a, from a very few, you know, a list of very few directors and, and creators, there's not really, you know, that's not really a, a skill that everybody has to be able to write. Well, hey, you know what? You know deal. what's good for us? We're going to get to see a guy give it a go. Yeah, with Ryan. Right? Because. I mean, he's literally, and he said this over and over, he is on a 100% blank canvas for this. Yeah, yeah. So we're I mean, really going to They see. pretty much greenlit his ass based on his efforts on The Last Jedi and his pitch for this. Yeah. I think what, like the big thing that we have to remember about the prequels is that George made those prequels at that specific time in you know in movie history because of the new technology and i yeah, think because he, was, he could because of the tech and, and yeah. he's on record saying that yeah and i think he was too much of a of a kid in a candy store when right. it came to those like, movies what, what he was can just, we do that's going to push the bounds regardless if it's narratively smart or not yeah i mean just just think of the entire opening to episode two where you get this fucking weird crazy like speeder chase through you know, like downtown Coruscant, they're going through like electrical fucking conduits and people are getting like <laughs> all this shit. Like, I feel like if he would have made those movies 10 years later to where, you know, after the the technology had already been established right. and it wasn't really new. Yeah, he could have focus focused on the on the story instead yeah. of the fucking visuals. Yeah, exactly. Like he would have been able to to pull himself away from just all the new toys that he had and, and really kind of hone in on what makes Star Wars special. Yeah. So anyway, so like I said, people, tangent alert. We got one for you again, early, early style, like like we did last week. So sorry. All right, so let's get back to the real conversation, Nick. And this is the fact that in the, whatever the fuck magazine this is, again, some great human just bought it and <laughs> scanned it and put it on the internet, yeah, so no parade, one else had to buy it. I think it's yeah. Parade Magazine, which I didn't even know that was still in magazine form anymore. But all right, let's let's go. Yeah. So apparently they they talked with Johnson and they created kind of this two panel breakdown of of the Last Jedi, and it just gives you kind of little uh, anecdotes about certain things, uh, past and present. But one of the interesting ones is under lightsaber one Oh one, as we said before the tangent Ray, it, it's described Ray uses a blue lightsaber. Kylo uses a red and director Johnson hints that we may see a new hue. And, and as Nick was explaining, was this live Nick when we were doing this or am I confusing this for our, our, I think we were off, we were off mic, but All right, yeah. run with it then because so, I, I think your theory makes sense, and I do not think this Snoke theory sucks. By the way, yeah. So essentially, with Ryan revealing that we we're gonna get a new lightsaber hue in this movie, to me the only person that that makes sense for this hue to, to be associated with is Snoke. If you think about Force users in general, especially in, in the movies, we've only seen Force users. That have lightsabers. We've never really seen a Force user with no lightsaber. So, for Ryan to say that we're going to get a new hue, to me, it makes the most sense to have that hue well, be, you know, Snoke's. You know who else it would work for, 100%. Who? You know. I mean, Luke? Exactly. It could be Luke. What if Luke busts out some crazy-ass color? Because, remember, he thinks the Jedi should end, so he's he's not dedicated to making it green or blue. It's true. He could bust out, like you said, it's a very interesting theory. He could bust out a, a white lightsaber, right. completely neutral color. Um, my thoughts was, were that we were going to get like an orange or a yellow color from Snoke because 
if we look at you know his garb and obviously the dude is is very partial to yellow yeah we talked gold. in the last cast i mean he he may look like a fucking prune but he dresses like a pimp yeah and this guy is clearly very powerful in the force it's something that we've heard a lot recently he's very strong and prior to his disfiguration i would imagine that he was also a pretty good lightsaber combatant as most force users are so it would be well, it would fucking be kind nine of foot tall i mean shit he's got yeah. leverage if anything else oh yeah i mean he would be a a very very scary foe to go up against in a lightsaber battle being nine foot and before he was disfigured so my my initial thought and i'm gonna stick with it and, and see what happens is that we're gonna get like a yellow or an orange hue from snoke but i do like the idea of like a white lightsaber from from luke and this reminds me i don't know if i dreamed this up like way back in the day when the prequels were coming out but i can specifically remember a trailer for episode two and it showed the fight between Obi-Wan and and Jango Fett on Kamino when they're on the landing bay and I could have swore like Obi lights up his lightsaber but under it like one of the like the text flashes in the trailer says crystal lightsabers I was like what the fuck I thought that like Obi got a new lightsaber it was like a new color but I've met like I, I don't know if I've ever been able to find that trailer ever again but yeah, I mean, white lightsaber. Yeah, you got me the, on that one, man. I mean, I, I'm definitely. I try to block out a lot of the prequel period, so that doesn't help. But yeah, it was just something that I. I All know we know I is saw. he he definitely lost his saber in TPM, so he clearly had to have had a new one in in clones. Yeah, so maybe they were like maybe it was legit, and I just can never find that thing again. Oh, but no, man, he might have been doing drugs as a little boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could have been. Could have been. So I, I think it's interesting that Johnson is teased we're going to get a new hue, and just calling it new, I mean, it can't be purple, so it you know it's got to be like fucking, as Nick said, pink, orange, yellow, white. I don't even think we can say black because the Darksaber has been prominently featured on the last season of Star Wars Rebels. I mean, that's like the... Uh, now that that is canon, if you would just real the, the the short of it, I mean, essentially Sabine Wren, who is part of Mandalore, she's a Mandalorian. Her family is one of the ruling class, and yada yada yada. There's at one point in time, there's a Mandalorian Jedi who created a dark saber and then brought it back to Mandalore and essentially ruled with it. And the the legend is, whatever Mandalorian faction or family has the dark saber, they're the one that rule the planet. So, yeah, and, and it's been prominently featured. So it is a lightsaber, but it is dark because the Mandalorian made it that way for whatever reason. Do you so if, think that this is one other theory that I just thought, do you think that we could see Leia ignite a saber? I mean, she's uh, a force user. Come on. <laughs> that would be painful just cause I mean like Leia, well, we know dude, I mean, a it force just, user, but like, I mean, it, I think it'd be awesome, but it just reinforces the fact that she's gone and yeah, exactly. whatever role she was supposed to have has been diminished. Yeah, that that that's like my reason for saying that it's painful is like to see her light up a lightsaber would be just beyond amazing. It would be but then like Gaga. Like, I mean, that's another thing where we talked about a few weeks ago. I forget what we were going to say. We, we were going to stand up and scream out loud if it happened. But that this would be another instance. Yeah, where I'd literally just start screaming and probably run around the theater. See, like I could make a like <laughs> I could make an argument for pink with that. Like I could see Leia rocking a pink lightsaber. <laughs> I mean, especially if she, if we go, like, there was a lot of speculation from us that she was going to go after Snoke herself. I mean, that was going to be or the thing. Or at least Ben. I mean, Kylo. Yeah. So, I mean, for her, if she was to go after somebody like that, unarmed would be ludicrous. I, I do think if, if they're not bullshitting us in nine, like, she was definitely going to fucking confront her son. Oh, yeah. I think so, for sure. I mean, that's that's without a doubt. There was going to be a meeting between those two, and there still might be an episode eight. Someone did. I don't know, I don't know if you checked it out, but on entertainmentboo.com, you know, that's my site. I write for it, but I, I love finding web gems, as I call it, just random shit on the internet. And this week, someone did, like, an animated <laughs> parody of the Last Jedi trailer, and the one scene where it's Kylo attacking his mom's ship, like, he's like, ah, oh, I don't know, I can't do it. And she's like, pew, 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 blows him up. She's like, suck it up, pussy, or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just funny as hell. Nice, nice. Uh, 
Yeah, so uh, I do think if we get a new hue, honestly, it's probably going to be Snoke or Luke. Yeah. Uh, Because I just, I don't see, especially once we get into the the new trailer talk, I don't see Kylo having a new one. I don't see Rey having a new one. No, no, I don't Um, think so either. I just don't think they're going to spend the time on them constructing a lightsaber. I don't even think it's that big of a deal at this point in time. Because, again, the the Jedi should die, right? I mean, that was all part of their ritual. Yeah, I mean, well, that was, you know, that was just a part of about, you know, every every Force user's ritual because that was a part of um, Sith training as well. I mean, now we know from the new canon that a part of Sith training was to kill a Jedi, steal their lightsaber crystal to use that to make your lightsaber. Yeah, and then bleed it. Yeah, and then you bleed it out. Previously in old canon, you were they made synthetic crystals. And they well, had to concentrate the whole through the bleeding force thing, Nick. It. I don't know if you saw it this week, but people are making an argument that the Lucasfilm story group across whatever mediums, be it books, comics, games, have really beaten in the whole Kyber Crystal bleeding thing. That it, it's almost setting up the Last Jedi to feature it. Yeah, I mean that's something that we spoke about a little bit before we before we lit the mics up, and to me. If, if that was the case, then, like, obviously people are, are talking about that in reference to Rey. So she would be the one to bleed the crystal because there's nobody else that really could unless it's Luke for some re- weird reason. But then that would still be red. Like, it doesn't bleed. Right. Exactly. Like, so. Yeah. Unless it, like, half bleeds and it's, it's yeah, unless, trying to like, show. Yeah, unless, like, Rey taps into that something else and... Um, it was a, damn it, there's another thing I watched this week, too, where it essentially explained, like... Luke is almost searching for this new middle ground. Yeah. Where yeah. you do dabble in both and and you're not tied to the the strict rules of the Jedi because they were false and that they were really what created the split in in the Sith and then ultimately the chosen one choosing the dark side over the light side. You know, so y- y- you never know. I mean, yeah, I mean, th- and that could like to me, if that's gonna we, happen, we need to at least stop thinking about the force in terms of the light side and the dark side moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's been pretty well established with this new trilogy is that we're, we're not going to get these divisions anymore. Like, yeah, that's it's, not what it's no longer black and white Darth versus Luke. Um, they can float between it. I mean, Kylo for heaven's sake, floats between it. We saw it in The Force Awakens. I mean, he struggles daily with the yeah. pull from the light. I mean, he's got his his grandfather's ashes in, you know, in his room and, you know, whatever facility that he stays at for the First Order. We, we've we seen him just I mean, even in these new it. trailers, I mean, when he gets his monologue time and he's essentially telling himself, like, suck it up, dude. Get tough. Forget about that shit. Yeah, yeah. So, Fuck good people. I mean, if and to me, like, that makes another case for, like, the yellow slash orange hue because that's, like, to me, yellow is, like, as is neutral if we're going to go there. And if it was going to be yellow for Snoke, it would be more of, like, a stylistic choice. Like, he would pick a yellow lightsaber on purpose for that reason. Um, but if it's going to be related to, like, this neutral kind of coming to the middle of the force... I feel like yellow would make sense there because blue and green are already established. Red is already established. If we're going to find a middle, to me, it's, it's yellow. So, um, I mean, we're six days out, people. So we're going to find out pretty damn soon. Um, but it w- I will say this. If it's Ray, it would be fucking weird to see the lights, uh, the Skywalker family lightsaber any other color than blue. Oh, totally. I mean, it, w- it would look fucked up red. Yeah, I mean, even though Darth Saber is essentially a modified model of his Jedi Saber, it would still look weird. Yeah, I mean, you don't have the you know the black additions that you do with the Vader Saber, so just seeing that lightsaber ignite and not be blue would be <laughs> like, whoa. And then maybe that's what they're going for. Maybe they're going for like that shock factor, and you're like, they're they're trying to tell us like. Hey, look, everything is changing. Like, this lightsaber that's been in the trilogy or in the Star Wars saga since the beginning, since episode four, is different. And that signifies that right. everything I mean, is different. Ray could end up bleeding it in the who knows what color. Yep. it's Anything's possible with this trilogy, as we're, you know, as I think we're going to see. So, right. 
Alright, dude, so before we get into this next part, people, I, I really do because I, I almost dislike my friend for sending me the video. Uh, we're going to talk about a new TV spot, Twitter spot, social spot that was shared yesterday. Um, uh, ABC News had it, and uh, the reason I'm putting up a warning is because I, I really think the last shot is it's blasphemy to be showing at this point. Yeah, that was and a moment that... If we weren't ooh. so dedicated to sharing our opinions on all things Star Wars, I would honestly feel really bad right now that I saw it. So, here's your warning. Tune out for a while, probably 20 minutes or more, and we'll be back to talk about our predictions. So, all right, that's your that's your warning. Here we go. Okay, so yesterday, Nick, we got this trailer that I think originated on social media, either through uh, Star Wars Twitter or Star Wars Instagram. And you're just watching, you're like, all right, cool, there's a new shot. Man, that new shot of Poe's really fucking cool where he whips the X-Wing around like that. I've never seen that before. And then literally the last two seconds, you see something and you go, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> That's the only way to describe it. Is That's exactly how I felt. I was like, what the fuck? It's... Go ahead and let them know what I'm talking about. Yeah, so the last couple of seconds of the trailer, we see a shot of Rey flanked by two Praetorian guards. They're clearly standing in Snoke's quarters. And then she pulls Kylo's lightsaber to her hand, ignites it. And then the last that's the last thing you see is like her standing there with Kylo's ignited lightsaber in, in like a very angry look on her face and then at that moment where she ignites it the praetorian guards clearly draw down as well and face her yeah and i, I think that's uh, something you really have to identify because you know there are people out there that think she is going full bad and they could see this and just be like oh yeah well it makes sense so anyways dude first off how the fuck do you show that you re like that is that's a moment that when that happens in the theater, if they don't show this in the trailer, like people freak the Gasp! fuck out. Like, I mean, it, to me, I I almost feel like this would be if the Force Awakens trailer showed Kylo stabbing his dad through the fucking chest. Yeah, like this is a massive moment, <laughs> and I mean, okay, I know we can't like we we might be overreacting because we haven't seen the film yet, and I know that like when the first official trailer, but that dropped, that's what makes said, it even crazier. Think if we are overreacting and what it's actually going to turn into. I mean, Jesus yeah. Christ, can you even imagine what 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 that could play out to be? Yeah, I, and that's what I'm like trying to get at is if they feel like this is a trailer worthy moment, Fuck. then like, can you imagine the other shit that's going to be in this movie? It's going to be crazy. It's going to be insane. I, mean, I was flabbergasted when I saw it. I was like, who the fuck thought that was a good idea to show that? Because, I mean, think about what that could be detailing, Nick. I mean, think about what that is showing. Oh, yeah. I mean, we've speculated a lot, like, pre-cast. Like, when you showed me this or you sent me the article that had this trailer, we were like, okay, so what could this mean? I mean, we went through probably five different theories within ten minutes. I mean, there's a lot that could be, you know— brought up about this and i mean we're gonna go into some of it but it, it like you said whoever decided to put this in there is either a genius to just like increase the hype level like tenfold pre-release you know the week before the release or is you know a dumbass because this is yeah i mean like this is a moment that if i saw it in the theater for the first time i would that's like, the key that's point because i that moment that's the key point because I still think there's going to be a payoff to seeing how it plays out. I'm not saying that's not going to happen. But I think seeing it play out in full for the first time with a blank canvas in a theater would be so much better than what we've just fucked for ourselves. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's almost like the Ray pulling the, the Skywalker family saber to herself Damn straight. in the forest. Perfect. Like, Perfect. Yeah. That's the exact analogy we needed. Th so, that's exactly right. I mean, it would be no different if when Force Awakens come out, you saw Rey reach for the fucking lightsaber, which, by the way, in those previews, they only ever showed in Finn's hands. I mean, they those previews had people believing that Finn was going to be the Force-sensitive one. And it wasn't for some fucking dumb commercial where they showed a little girl Force push a little boy that people were like, oh, yeah, Rey's probably the one. I mean, Nick and I, we knew it all along. I mean, come on. 
I mean, anyone could have saw that Ray was going to be the fucking hero. Yeah, no shit. But they never <laughs> showed Ray even remotely sniffing the fucking lightsaber. Yeah. I, and I in think... this one, they fucking show her sucking up Kylo's. So they're either saying, Nick, let's just get into it. At minimum, at minimum, they're either saying that Ray is clearly revolting against Snoke and probably trying to save Kylo at this point. Like, I envision... Snoke almost lightening his ass like Luke or like force choking him like Vader and his saber's laying down and Ray's watching this and she's still kind of like kind of like Luke or Vader watching something go down like what the fuck what the what, 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 what? and she's just like this is fucked up yeah you know because she's probably thinking like well it's Kylo and he's a fucking asshole and he killed Han who's probably my dad and this guy's probably my brother oh shit yeah, exactly. <laughs> she fucking grabs it and then just fucking goes nuts and both of them escape. Or, you know, she's ready herself to just be like, fuck you, Kylo, and fuck you, Snoke. This isn't what I need. What the fuck am I doing here? I'm trying to get the fuck out, right? I mean, at minimum, that's what's happening. Yeah, I really think it's the first one, especially if we look at the situation that she's in. I mean, I know we only see three seconds of this scene, but t- take it in. She is oh, it's not even three on... seconds, dude. I mean, I literally probably scrubbed it 50 times. It might be a second and a half. Yeah, so she's flanked on both sides by Praetorian guards, which means that she is not free to, to move about this chamber as she wishes. So she's there for a specific purpose. And it's but she's standing, like, snow. right up on his throne almost, right? I mean, kind of in an in a elevated position. Yeah, yeah, and... Maybe this, but so, Snoke's but, not on the throne. No, clearly. So this is what I think is going down is like, you know, they've been Kylo and Ray go to this to, to you know Snoke's facility, whether it be a ship or somewhere else. We'll see. Willingly or not willing, willingly, but I almost think that Ray's going to be like. I think it's right. willingly. Yeah, like all right. Yeah, so she's there. There, this to me, this is towards the. This is definitely Act Three. Um She's going through all of the these things. This is after she gets blasted by Snoke with force. Maybe after she gets blasted by Snoke with the force. I'm not 100 percent sure. It could be, could not be. But this is the point to. Well, where I mean, honestly, I was I was thinking it's almost before. Maybe she has this little revolt and then he fucks her up. I don't know. I feel like this could be like the actual escape, but where where she wisens up and understands that Luke was right. Yeah, like this is where I think this is where like Snoke is done with Kylo and he feels like he has Rey and he's like, yeah, you know, yeah, he's fucking you, him up. He's killing him and she and he's, he's like doing the he's doing the Palpatine to Luke. Yeah, exactly. It's like it's time for you basically telling her like it's, you know, fulfill your destiny. It's time for you to take your place at my side as my apprentice. Right. And she's seeing all this go down, and she's like, no, this is this is not right. Like, But you said. but you're saying there, there's almost, there's probably a point where she's almost thinking like, well, if they're at least going to fill me in on what my potential role is, role is in all this, maybe I'll hear him out. Oh, yeah. I think that's that's for sure what's going to happen. Like like I said in the last cast, I don't want her to get captured because it, it's it's another weak point for me. And it's another it's another thing that would happen that's just reinforcing the fact that like, oh, yeah, the bad guys are bad. Where whereas if she goes to them herself willingly, I mean, we still think that they're, you know, obviously we know that they're bad guys. But it, like it shows that she's exploring her options and that she's. She's not afraid to dabble in what is considered to be, you know, the dark just to find yeah, out. She just wants who, to know what, what the fuck's going is. on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, I think that, yeah, like she's been there for a while. Snoke is clearly impressed by her. He's ready to dish Ky- Kylo to the side. And then Ray has a turn and is like, look, Luke may not be right, but I don't think you're right either. And we need we're we're gonna break the fuck out, me and Kylo together. So she pulls the saber over, strikes down the two Praetorians, and then I don't know what's gonna happen between the two of them and Snoke, but I think that's probably gonna be where where well we, go. we know between the two of them they can pilot the fuck out of whatever ship they steal. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, two. You know, I don't know if if either one of them are Poe Dameron level pilots, but. You know, they're, they're let's definitely talk about good. that real quick, Nick. Since it is featured in the trailer, is Poe Dameron a better X-wing pilot than Luke Skywalker? I don't know, dude. That move was dope. Like, right? Be, You've never piloting, seen that before. 
no, I've never like seen that before. It looks like he's going through like a comms array, which you know causes the uh, the Tie Fighter to cut the wings off, and then we see this like this flip like yeah, turn. He, he almost move. does like a like a like a Mick twist, like a skateboard move. Yeah, he's like he like drifts. He's almost going like a, a, up a half pipe and like fucking tricks up the back end and does like a complete stop reverse. Oh, yeah, and if you look at it, like, he's coming through, like, he's busting through what looks like, you know, a, a capital ship of some sort. So I don't know if he went through, like, a hangar bay and is coming out because he's clearly pulling fire behind him from some explosion. Or if that's just, like, him blowing up another ship and then going through the... Um, through the remnants of it and then coming back around for another kill. But this dude is, like... Yeah, he is a badass pilot. I think so he's who's better a better Luke. pilot? Anakin I think... Skywalker, Luke Skywalker, or Poe Dameron? Oh man, you throw Anakin in there, and that's like a that's a real shakeup. I I don't think there's even a question who's number one. You think it's you think it's Poe? You're gonna go Poe? No, it's Anakin. It's Anakin. 100%. Yeah, okay. I, I mean, thought so. If if you buy in the comics being canon, which by the way you have to because they are because they are <laughs> yeah. I mean, he literally, as Vader, would take down squadrons by himself. Yeah. I mean, in, this... in a little rinky-dink TIE Interceptor, or TIE Advance, he would fucking take down entire squadrons. Yeah. Now, I, I will say that I think that, um, I, I think Poe's better than Luke. Yeah, I, th- I agree. I think Poe's probably number two. Yeah, but... I think Luke's a better shot. Yeah, I mean, Bullseye and Although Poe did fucking whacked down like what 10 or so ties over the battle of, yeah during the the, the battle of Tagadana. yeah exactly so i mean he's a badass motherfucker and you also have to keep in mind too vader or anakin and luke both had force yeah they abilities. they cheated i mean <laughs> shit vader's force jesus so i mean he's he really cheated yeah so poe being able to pull the shit that he does with no force no i agree that's why is... he, he's definitely number two but i i don't I don't think anyone beats Vader. Yeah, that's one thing that he really didn't degrade in even after his his kind his uh his fall and his, you know, mechanation after he became Darth Vader is right. that he was still able to He could to still pilot, pilot the fuck yeah. out of a ship. And it was just like to him that was natural because I mean, even growing up on Tatooine, yeah, you know, with pod the racing, pod racing right? and stuff like that. So I mean I mean if the the first time he blew up his first capital ship, what'd he say? Now this is pod now, Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So yeah, I mean Poe Dameron is definitely a Mac Daddy in a in an X Wing, and I'm yeah I'm definitely gonna enjoy seeing him up there and seeing him you know pull some crazy shit off, but yeah man this trailer I mean that especially that last like you said second and a half that's it's just I I remember crazy. when we were talking about the Monday Night Football trailer being a little too much and now it's like yeah whatever but this one I mean. Yes, as a fan, of course I'm fucking excited. Of course Nick was excited to see it. But at the same time, after I saw it, I'm like, man, that just, it seems like they blew that load way too early. Yeah. For no reason. I mean, what's the fucking reason for showing that? I mean, is that really going to get another couple people to come see the fucking movie at this point? Uh, Yeah, it's not like... Do we (laughs) really need to see that? Do we really need to see that Ray? Force pulls Kylo's saber to herself and ignites it and probably uses it. Yeah, I, I just don't think it was necessary. I mean, not like at you all. Said, I mean, there's no reason for that. Like you said, there was like that shot is not going to get more people in the theater. No. Okay, like your your audience is there already, and if they like nobody needed that. Dude, to, like, they, push they didn't. The edge. We've said this before. They didn't need to put out a single fucking trailer. No. For this movie, and it would still have made the same fucking ticket sales. Yeah, it's the Star Wars audience is massive and it's established and it's not going anywhere. It's not even us. I mean, it's a new Star Wars movie. It's just like. But even bigger and has an even longer history to the, the the Marvel universe. I mean, it's the same shit. Oh, new Marvel movie's out. Okay, I'll go see it. Oh yeah, absolutely. It doesn't I mean, matter it's... if I read the comics or whatever. It's a new Marvel movie. I know it's going to be entertaining. Same shit with Star Wars. They're like, oh, new Star Wars. Oh, by the way, is George behind it? No, he's not. Okay, yeah, sure. I'm in. Let's go. But uh, yeah, man, this was. I mean, it was definitely a just like a jaw dropping moment and like. You can just, like you said you were doing, you can just scrub back and forth and leave it on the freeze frame of, of Ray standing there 
lightsaber ignited and just like a thousand different thoughts run through oh, your yeah, head. Oh yeah, exactly. You're like, well, it could go this way or that way or this way or that way or that way or this way. Yeah, I mean, who knows? I mean, maybe the biggest part after that is like she pulls the saber and fucking kills Kylo, and then everything turns on its head. Like, yeah, e- exactly. Every- what, what if she just murders everyone's like, all right, Snoke? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, I mean. I mean, you for the longest time have been saying like Disney is not going to turn their first no female way. hero no into way. a dark no side, way. into no a way. dark side person. I mean, this if is... they do, it's it, it's temporary to nine. Yeah, um, I think so too. I, I mean, I wouldn't be completely surprised, but I I don't think it's going to happen, dude. I mean, that that could happen. Like she goes to strike down Kylo, maybe she doesn't kill him. He survives and somehow escapes, and now the 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 coin is flipped. Kylo runs back to the resistance to his mother right. to his uncle no. and is like, "Look, totally. we we got to go. We well, got to go. save her." Yeah, because he'll me- feel bad for bringing her in the first place. But I mean, really, the twist could be Ray willingly going over to Snoke. I mean, she knows the First Order is bad. Oh yeah, I think it's that's like, gonna happen. I mean, like, I it's not know. like she has deep ties to the resistance. We, we've been told that, but. It's not like she doesn't know that they're fucking bad news. So the fact that she even allows herself to be captured or willingly goes to Snoke, that that could be major. Yeah, I think it's... I'm of the camp, firmly of the camp, that it's a willing choice. Um, I don't think that she's going to get captured. I think she's going to go on her own. Whether she chooses to stay there or not, whether she finds out that this was a bad idea or not is yet to be seen. But I think the initial choice is going to be, you know, of her own volition. So, um, so yeah, man. I mean, that's that trailer. If you now, do you seen think? It yet, okay, do you think ahead. it could be a deal to save somebody? Like a trade-off? Like maybe like Finn? they captured Finn? Yeah, from yeah. the when he was infiltrating the First Order. Like we'll we'll let him go if you come. Uh, yeah, I mean, that could definitely be something, because we... I don't know, yeah, I don't know, but, but like I said, I mean, it could be something as drastic as Nick brought up to where she grabs a saber and just fucking murders, and is like, alright, let's do it, or it could be her betrayal is not trusting Luke, and just going and be like, yo, fuck it, I'm gonna see what Kyla has to say, and that leads to her be like, alright, let's go. Yeah, yeah, dude, I think, this is what I'm 100% sure of, is I am... 100% sure already that this movie is going to be top three, like Star Wars all time. Oh, you think? Yeah. I, I'm like, from what I'm seeing, from what, I mean, from the fact that Ryan got his own trilogy. I mean, that's pretty every, huge right there. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm putting this above at least one of the OT, and I think it's probably going to be episode four. I, I mean, like, I think it's, you know, yeah. uh, you know, kind of, kind of widely accepted that four was probably the the bottom tier of the OT. Oh, it. I I think it's a generation thing. Um, I think people that grew up in the seventies are probably always gonna not like Jedi. Yeah. Uh, but me growing up in the eighties, Jedi to this day is still my favorite. I don't care about the Ewoks. I think it is the most emotionally impactful. We talked about it a million times because of the. Last conflict between father and son. You don't fucking beat that shit. You don't beat it. It wasn't beaten Empire when the, during the reveal. There's just something about that battle between Luke and Darth and Jedi that is deeply special to me and will always emotionally resonate with me. Yeah, all you got to so, do is just mute it right before that no comes in exactly. and it's being right. perfect. Because, <laughs> right. I mean, that I don't know. I just, I've always been a Jedi guy. I mean, I, I'm a Jedi Empire New Hope dude. I I'm okay. It's it's really because I'm me, even Jedi, sometimes maybe Jedi New Hope Empire. To be honest with you, Empire as a little kid was not my favorite movie because it made me sad. <laughs> yeah, I did not point. like Empire because they didn't win. But if I'm throwing one on, like for me, I'm it's Empire. So to me, Empire and then Jedi and then New Hope, and it's just like they're all so close. Like to me, obviously, there's no bad movie in the OT. Um, just because all of them are so well done, whether, you know, it'd be because of the editors, like we were talking about earlier in this cast or, or what have you. Um, I think the three directors definitely showed their different skill sets and showed that, you know, out of George Lucas's hands, Star Wars can definitely be something special with Kirshner on five and then Kasdan on six. But I think like, it was just such a weird thing watching five. Cause like you said, you know, it's it ends on a downer in a way, and you don't 
back Hell then yeah, especially like dude when don't... han got when han got fucked up like that really messed with my head yeah it's like every one of the good guys is losing like han solo is frozen in carbonite luke skywalker gets his hand cut off i mean you have billy d lando calrissian and leia that you know just escape the clutches of the empire from bespin you saw c3po get blown to shreds and then you know reassembled by chewy i mean it was definitely it and that to me is what makes it special it's because when i was growing up watching these in like the early 90s because i was born you know That's late funny. 80s yeah like to <laughs> me <laughs> to me i had never really seen anything like that before like it was it was special to see a movie where the good guys don't come out on top and you are like to it. It is dark. I mean, watching it like you know you're not going to get no the one. I mean, but. if you think about it, no other trilogy has really done that. I mean, the, the middle act's always tough, and and that's the other thing that makes Empire special. It, it was like one of the first middle act trilogy movies that stood above the original. Yeah, yeah. Every, a lot of times, being being the sequel or especially the middle. I mean, usually the middle is the hardest film to tell because you you don't really have a true end yeah and you don't like you're not really i mean you can bring in new threads but basically what you're doing is just a full movie of continuation where you have like right. side plots maybe maybe starting and then also being wrapped up within the same film yeah, i mean nothing is resolved at the end of the empire no i mean it, if anything it's just more questions like the, your the heroes rebellions just on been... the run uh they took heavy hits i mean they lost general han Luke got fucked up. He learned that he's Vader's son, which is fucking him up in the head. Yeah, I mean, they lost their their base on Hoth. Yeah, Hoth got fucked up. I mean, they were definitely in dire straits. And, like, it was... I mean, it was a special film. And I think it's always going to be a special film. And I really hope that's what Ryan can achieve here with Episode Eight, Because, I mean, it's another middle chapter. It's another one that looks like it's going to be darker. And it's another one where we have these established plot threads that have created so much intrigue since the end of episode seven that like everybody out there in the world is just like yearning to see where all of these characters are going to go and like, you know, where the story is going to progress to. And I mean, I think that's why, you know, that's what makes this hype so big, even, you know, even bigger than seven a little bit at least in terms of the content like the hype for seven was was mainly around just like star wars is back i don't care what it is as long as it's good this hype is around like there is so much good shit that i want to find out in this movie that like i can't wait anymore well i mean just just listen to some shit mark hamill said i mean he's on record saying when he read the script he came up to ryan said like this is really how you envision luke yeah, it, like this is really your idea. I mean, they're, they're, Mark's on record saying that he really did not initially kind of feel Luke's direction in this movie. Yeah, I mean, after forty, you know, after being off of the the trilogy for thirty I mean, plus, he, years, he had to make up like uh, they came out this week. Like the story he made up was essentially he had some force kid, and the force kid killed himself with his lightsaber because he left it out. Like that's because he needed to get in a really dark place based on ryan's treatment of the character yeah yeah i mean that, that's definitely not canon but it, that is an interesting way to get yourself to a dark place is like you were the cause of the death of a child is never gonna keep, keep you in right a, in i mean that's what movie. hamill said he had to think about to get to luke's state of mind based on the way ryan wrote him it's, see like that this is what i love about this trilogy is that people there's a lot of old school people out there even like people that are the same age as me that are just super attached to the OT and are really kind of resistant to this new trilogy. And it's because of the, the level of emotion that, that the story group is giving to all of these characters and like the level of, I guess for a lack of a better word, like fluidity in their, in their emotional state, because like the first time that we saw the trailer and stuff like that for episode eight, like me and you were super hyped, but I talked to one of my friends who's a big star Wars fan and like, in you know, OT only kind of person. And he was like, why is Luke so, you know, why is he so emotional? Why is he so crazy? And I guess it's just like, if you think about the OT, everybody was pretty, you know, was pretty flat in 
I don't want to say definitely not in their acting and definitely not in the portrayal of the characters, but like emotionally speaking, like there was no ebbs and flows in like how everybody felt like we see in this new trilogy. Like everybody was pretty much flatline in their well, emotional I mean, stance. Uh, the biggest reaction you get out of Luke is when he gives up that Leia's his sister and that's when he taps into the dark side and beats his dad down. Yeah, and there's a I lot. Mean, that's the first time you see Luke like actually get fucking amped up. Yeah, I mean, well, obviously, when you get the reveal, he kind of gets emotional and, you know, angry. Well, of to course. I mean, yeah. it's OK. So the two times Luke shows another emotion besides wondrous farm boy, like, oh, wow, what's next? I'm in this big galaxy is when he learns who his dad is and when he gives away the, the deepest secret that the Jedi's tried to hide from both him and Vader and Palpatine that he had a sister. Yeah, and once once he he knows that he gave that up to Vader, that's when he's he taps into the dark side for a bit and fucking beats his ass. Yeah, and if you look at all the other main characters, I mean, like Han has essentially no emotional. He's fluctuation. the same throughout. He's yeah. he's a cocky asshole making jokes the entire time and probably sexually harassing the princess. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely saying some questionable lines for sure. And yeah. then Leia's the and same same like, same way. She's just she's in control but gets pissy. Yeah, and. Obviously, the dark side characters. I mean, Vader was built to be an emotionless kind of, you know, yeah. massacre. He, he shows no emotion till he yells no and fucking tosses Palpatine. Yeah, and then all Palpatine is just all overconfidence for you know, right. from the That's moment. All he steps I mean, on the he screen. literally doesn't change. Period. I mean, he's just cocky as fuck. Yeah, the until time. the moment he is dead. So, like, a lot of people are used to that because. I mean, obviously, the OT is always going to be the gold and the gold standard. Well, yeah, they don't want to see a broken hero. I mean, yeah, but that's no like, one does. But I'm interested by that shit. Yeah, to me, that's what makes it more appealing is because the characters seem more real. Like it seems like like you can more identify with the care like with the way that these new characters are written than you could with the old ones. I mean, obviously, there are some things where you can identify with with the characters from the OT, but like. You can look at somebody like Kylo or like Rey and see the emotional state that they're in and where they come from in their childhood or even like before that. And people can identify with that where like people couldn't really identify with like a Han or a Leia or, or something like that, especially since they showed no emotional weakness. And I know that in, in movies like this and fantastical movies, it, like you want to see like these characters that are just over-the-top heroic and always exuding the sense of 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 power and strength but like that's that's not how real life is and this like so this kind of writing style that they're doing now gives the characters a little bit more depth in my opinion yeah so we'll find out we'll, we'll see how much depth and character we get in the last jedi but it, i think as nick kind of hinted it's probably going to be more than we're used to um, I think J.J. did pretty well in The Force Awakens, especially with Kylo. I mean, think about the character Kylo. I mean, he goes from kind of cool bounty hunter murderer to a fucking nut job who will tear up an entire bridge or a room on a, an expensive Star Destroyer or spaceship. Yeah, to me, he was the easiest character to fuck up, too. Like, yeah. you could have written him really flat really easily, just like follow the vader route and write him as like right, just make him anakin stoic. skywalker yeah and then but they didn't like they went a different direction and they showed like the emotional struggles of this kid i mean he's in a really he's good essentially way. what anakin should have been doing I yeah mean, that like, type of shit is what anakin should have been doing as a jedi to show that like he was super unstable yeah i mean the only way that he showed his instability aside from slaughtering an entire village of tuscan raiders was like crying <laughs> yeah. literally whining yeah that was he's it. holding me back yeah <laughs> it's just like <sighs> it's to see if there were scenes in there where it was like anakin in the training room and he's like you know going hard in in the training room whether it be against a sparring dummy or something and then like you see flashes of like his mother being killed you see flashes of yeah, like, his and like time he's as getting angry and angrier. And imagine if he's like sparring with Yoda and he's like almost beating Yoda, seeing his mom get killed, and he's letting oh the dark my. side come in. I mean, come on, dude! Like, I can I write Star chilled. Wars, motherfuckers. <laughs> I can write fucking Star Wars. Sign me the fuck up. 
Dude, I just got chills thinking about that because that would have been a great. I mean, like the only scene we get between Anakin and Yoda is like Anakin saying like, "I I have these visions. I don't know what yeah, to do about she's these visions." Die, and, then, and Yoda's like, "Yeah, get over it." Yeah, I mean, something like that would have been <laughs> fucking awesome. Exactly. I mean, we or hear... even Sparm with Obi Wan in the temple, and and he goes overboard thinking about it. Yeah, I mean, it's so. It's so easy at this point. I could rewrite the whole goddamn prequel trilogy and it'd still be better than the fucking vomit we got. I mean, just because we hear in the original, I mean, in the prequel trilogy, Obi-Wan say that, you know, like, say, or Anakin say that he was, you know, I thought I was already better swordsman than Master Yoda. And then obviously Obi comes back with, you know, not yet my very young apprentice in episode two. So, like, it's established in there that this dude is a badass fucking lightsaber fighter. And the right. only time we ever get to see him against anybody who's up to his level is against he Obi-Wan loses. at the end of the movie. And then Dooku, yeah, but that was a weird fight because he was dual wielding and, like, he just obviously wasn't used to that. But like, a well, fight... his 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 Sith Dooku fight, he dominated. Yeah, oh yeah, he clearly fucked him up. Like I mean, it wasn't he, he even learned, a challenge. He learned from his mistakes and just made Dooku look like a fool. I mean, he cuts off both his hands and his head. Yeah, he does. <laughs> yeah, it's in like true. one simple move, he literally chops off both hands in a simple move. Catches his lightsaber on the fly, and then waits until shithead gives him the green light and chops off his head. Yep. So, I mean, he was clearly a good lightsaber practitioner, but, like, there were so many moments like that that was just not taken advantage that they of. They could have showed him slipping in a much more interesting way than what they did because they didn't show a slip. It was, okay, he's Anakin, and then literally a second later, he's Darth Vader. We're done. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I mean, that, that makes a lot of sense. There was just so many moments to do it, too. I mean, like, you're literally in a war and you're you're a Jedi. Like, you're not supposed to kill human, you know, well, I guess you would say, like, living beings because all of the, the fighting was against droids. I mean, it's, well, except on Geonosis where you had the Geonosians and shit like that. But there, there could have been a, a wartime footage showing, you know, Obi... And Anakin on a battlefield fighting, and then, like, they're, they're about to capture some guy, and then Anakin is just, like, like you said, just going too hard. Like, the dark side is, is seeping in, and then Obi has to physically, like, hold him back. Like, what are you doing, dude? Like, can't, we can't do this. We're Jedi. Well, they, they could even accent it with, like, echoes of Sidious's voice, just like we kind of heard Kenobi talking to Rey in Force Awakens. I mean, there's so many little things they could have done that showed how he was being worked over. At the same time, also willingly working his way there because of his own, pat, you know, his own desire to be the most powerful of all time. Yeah, yeah, a lot, a lot, of, a lot of improvement. All right, Tangent. all right, dude. So <laughs> as we wrap this one up, Nick, let's just both throw out one prediction for the last jedi i mean it's it's getting late we've been going for a while so i don't we can't really dive too deeply into this but let, let's just each kind of share one thing we we think's gonna happen in the last jedi or that we're gonna find out i i'm gonna go man that we're gonna find out I don't want to take it to the yeah, bank. Whatever, dude. Yeah, just just say whatever. Yeah, yeah. You want. It doesn't okay. have to be a take it to the bank. It's just, just what yeah. maybe you want to see or what you think's going to happen. I want to see the reveal that Ray and Kylo are brother and sister, and that Ray is the uh, the daughter of Han and Leia. That was the article that you wrote up. Uh, thank you for yeah, coming so to my side. Got the, <laughs> if you haven't gotten that point yet, I mean, Nick all along has kind of hinted that, dude. I'll give him credit. I mean, since Force Awakens, he's kind of hinted that, yeah, you know, she could be a a solo Skywalker. I'm like, no way, no way, not the way they portrayed it. But, you know, we, we've been talking recently, and, and my theory that I wrote today, Nick and I actually kind of hashed out, I think, a cast or two ago, a little bit more, and then I just finally fleshed it out today. But I, I think it's pretty clear that she is going to be – a solo Skywalker. Oh yeah. I mean, to me, there's no better thing. Like, there's no better. It can story be. I mean, tell. it can be narratively explained. So, it, it, if I just give you my cliff notes, Nick, here's how I think this could all be explained, and how Han didn't recognize Rey, 
and how Raiden recognized Leia and, and vice versa. All right, so here we go. So we know for a fact that by the time Ben was 10, Snoke had already been kind of working him over and he was troublesome because that's when Leia and Han essentially, or at least Leia decides, I can't help him anymore. He needs to go to his uncle, right? Yep, yep. We also know that Han and Leia had a strained relationship. She was super focused on the New Republic, which again is kind of what Kylo has said or Adam Driver said about Kylo. He's like, listen, I never felt loved because my mom only cared about the New Republic and my dad didn't really care about much but adventure. So we know the shit was strained and we know they do separate. So I'm saying by the time Kylo is around 10, he gets shipped off, Han bails, but Leia's pregnant, yep. right? Yep. Leia has the baby. Just like Obi-Wan and Yoda, she realizes the danger of trying to keep this Force-sensitive child for herself. So she gives it up to a family friend. I mean, it could be Aiden Verzio from the video game. It could be uh, Loris Santeca, someone in the New Republic. Who knows? All right. So that right there explains why Rey does not recognize Leia. It also explains why Rey does not recognize Han. Boom and boom. And it would also explain why she does not rec- recognize Kylo Ren. And oh, there's yeah. another boom, right? So that explains it all. All right. So how does she end up on Jakku? Well, my theory is that once Ben takes down his uncle's shit, again, Leia's like, fuck. That plan failed. We now have this young toddler, you know, six-year-old, seven-year-old, who, too, has the potential to be found out by Snoke thanks to her power, but also to develop her own powers and potentially go bonzo like her fucking brother. Let's ditch her on a remote fucking desert planet where she has no contact with any of us. No one's going to find her out. And maybe my boy Lor Santeca will watch her from afar while we leave her closely with this asshole on our plot, right? Yep. All to mask her true identity. This is all being done by Leia to keep Rey hidden, just like Obi-Wan and Yoda did all that work to keep Luke and Leia hidden, which we know worked. They were able to keep those two hidden from the most powerful Force user in the galaxy of all time. Oh, yeah. So that... that that proves right there, Nick, that you can hide highly force-sensitive people from other highly force-sensitive people. Oh, yeah, 100%. And, like, that's pretty much, like, beat for beat what I had gone over when we were, like, on a cast before and I was really, like, breaking it down. So, yeah, I mean, to me, that, one, that makes the most sense narratively. And, two, not not only does it make the most sense, it, it inputs the most intrigue. Because now, if that's the case... Leia not only has one child that's within the grips of, you know, Supreme Leader Snoke in this movie. She has two. She has both Rey and Kylo. And we were already speculating that Leia is going to somehow, even in the last cast, like, that that a Leia-Snoke showdown is possible because of Snoke's personal vendetta against somebody in the Resistance. And we assumed that that was Leia. But now that is magnified a thousand times when not only does he have Kylo, but he has Ray too. So, and then, yeah, I mean, it's just like her whole mission after what happened to her son was to try to protect her daughter from the same fate. Yeah. And she's failed at this point now. Like if that's the case and not, not even to add in that she's, she's going to be Kylo's brother, which, has the built-in intrigue right there that whether she finds out before or after that they're siblings, like, she is going to this Kylo Ren person who was assumed to be a very evil man, now going to him seeking guidance. So it, it would be younger sister going to older brother, like, show me what I need. Show me, you know, how to to handle this, this new power that I have. And then it's for Luke, you know... It's still up in the air. I mean, like, in my theory, it could work whether he knows it's it's his, you know, niece or not. I mean, we've heard recently that they hugged. They filmed the scene at the end of Episode 7 where they embrace. And if, if that's the case, then that would put forward that Luke knows that this is his niece. Um, but it, but even I, if he I doesn't. Mean, but you could even, with our little theory, you could even argue that even Luke doesn't know about yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. He doesn't need to know. So... 
I mean, to me, that works the best, and it's the most interesting. To, like, if if she's forced Jesus, to me, that's just, like, as flat as you can get. Like, that's just... Right. And, and, I mean, I think you could probably explain away Luke being her dad, but I just, I don't think it is. Because as, as Nick said, I believe the story goes that Ryan actually asked JJ to change the ending. Yeah, because they were supposed didn't. to like embrace, but Ryan's like, but that doesn't make sense because they yeah. they don't really know each other, and it's like that's not where I'm taking this this relationship. Yeah, exactly. So to me, that's the only one. Like, if they go a different way and they prove me wrong, yeah, then I mean, like, okay. and the only other one potentially is Kenobi, but it just that just doesn't make sense in, in a timeline setting. I mean, it would have to be a descendant of Kenobi, which at that point they're not going to introduce a brand new Kenobi character in the middle of a movie. Yeah, like you're jumping, like anything that's not her being a solo, you have hoops to jump through. Even with Luke, like you're like, okay, you're Luke's daughter. We don't worry about your mother. Don't worry about her. We're not going to talk about her. It's not anybody important. You So you would either have to explain away her mother in like a five-minute scene or you would have to bring in another new character that we don't know about. And if she was the chosen one, it's just like you're rehashing something that already wasn't right. popular. From so I think, I think it's going to be either brother or sister is going to have to save the other instead oh, yeah. of son saving father. And it's do you gonna realize... It's going to be sibling like, saving sibling. Yeah, and like... Like you said, that is a like a family bond is powerful, especially in the Star Wars saga, because you we like we know how much the star like this uh, Skywalker family, you know, means to the Force and means to each other and how powerful they are. Like that is just gonna be like to me that sets up such good moments in the you know in the following movie. So, but then we also this is another thing I I kind of didn't take you seriously at first but in the force awakens i know at least once or twice either snoke or kylo references the girl and i yes clearly it's but they say it in a way like is it that girl we have sensed for all these years but we don't know who she is you know what i mean like he pulled when he said there was a there was a first order officer that was like talking right, it's to Kylo. the first time he goes nuts and fucks up a console. Yeah, he pulls this dude over and chokes him and says, "What girl?" Like he knows something. It's not yeah, like, like it's not just some random desert rat. Yeah, like he. It's almost like him and Snoke are clued into. There's this presence out there that is a female that means something. Yeah, I mean, the goddamn name of the film was The Force Awakens. I mean, it's literally. Another point I made in the article, Nick, was that the whole point of putting her on Jakku is to keep her powers dormant, just like Luke's were. I mean, exactly. Luke went 18 years not having a fucking clue that he had this power in him. Oh, yeah, and it's probably the same with Rey. I mean, Rey is around the same age. The only reason hers came out because she was under duress, and yeah. she was in the Falcon, and I do believe that's the first time she used the Force in full. Yeah, to, it was to when she was that piling movie. that thing and got away. Because the scene right after that was, there's been a you know an awakening. Yeah, dude. I, I mean, mean they, they literally sense it immediately when Ray taps into her potential. Yeah, it's to me, it's it's obvious. It's obvious, and it and like I don't know if I had like an affinity towards this because I really loved the Jason Jaina solo shit from episode. I mean, not from episode. Hey, I'll but give from you credit because I thought you were nuts when you first. I was like, there's no way the way they made Force Awakens. There's no way, but. Now, then, with the theory we've hammered out, I mean, I don't think there's any other way. Exactly. And, I mean, obviously, at the end of Episode 7, you had the hug between Leia and, and Rey. And yeah, and J.J.'s tried to, like, smoke play it off up. like, oh, yeah, I fucked up. It, it should have been true. I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah, it's too late And, now, and by the buddy. way, people, if you're still sitting there going, like, well, you explained why Han doesn't recognize her and why Rey doesn't recognize Leia and why Ben doesn't recognize Rey, but what about Leia? Well, guess what? Leia is a fucking Skywalker. You don't think she has the fucking willpower within herself to not sit there and blurt out like, "Oh my god, my daughter's here." Yeah, it's not, like she is a like a resistance general, one of the And she may not even know. I mean, again, I'm still thinking she gave up Rey when Rey was a little baby. I mean, who knows? I mean, I, I as a father, I do think you probably could tell. Yeah. I mean, you're, just you're, you're, but I do think Leia just like Obi-Wan 
and Yoda kept from Luke that he had a fucking sister for all the years. I mean, they worked directly with him, and they didn't say fucking shit. Yeah. I think Leia just played the game like, hey, I've kept her safe this long by pretending she doesn't exist, so... I mean, and I think that that J.J. dropped a lot of hints in that movie, regardless of whether he well, wanted to I or mean, not. I mean, Daisy Ridley, dude. Daisy Ridley is on record after Force Awakens saying, like, I thought it was pretty obvious who Ray's parents yeah, were. I mean, well, look at her reaction to Han's death. I mean, she had known Han Solo for, what, four days, maybe, before he died? And, like, the only type of interaction that they had was... You know, lukewarm at best when Han was like, you know, I could use somebody else on my crew for the for the Falcon and stuff. And I still kind of like say that there was a little bit of something in there. I mean, obviously, it, it oh, was you a could very tell tiny bit. you could tell he and, and we know Han's a crusty old fuck. Yeah, you could tell he instantly took a liking to her. Oh, yeah, immediately. And then like so that scene, her reaction when Han died and then. The, the hug between Leia, I mean, it, to me, I can see why Ray, like, or why Daisy was like, isn't it obvious? Like, I just saw a dude die who I've barely known, but I broke down like it was my father dying. I went to this woman who I have not, literally have not met. Yeah. <laughs> after, you know, after all this goes down and we and embrace she, she like hugs we've known me each like other we've for known years. each other for life. Yeah, exactly. And, and by the way, she knows this big walking carpet longer than me technically. Yeah. So and not only that, but my you know, her husband just died and the walking carpet's best friend. So I mean, if, if there was anybody that she should hug, it should have been Chewy unless Leia's like, "Oh, this girl pulled the Skywalker family saber to her and and defeated my son in a, a lightsaber battle." You say that's my daughter. Like, come on, people. Exactly. Like, this is it. Couldn't be spun any clearer at this at this point. Now, if we're wrong, all this was speculation. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, exactly. at this point, at this point, I don't think we're wrong though. Right. Um, so my little prediction here. And Nick kind of took mine, but that's okay because I think that's the biggest prediction you honestly can make. I think we will see Luke Skywalker fight with a saber, and it will be very impressive. You think it's going to be greeny? <sighs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, dude. I think. Well, I do think that he's he's got to come back and he's got to fight. I don't he's know either going to fight and die. I mean, I, I still don't really, That's why I didn't even bring that up. I still don't even want to go there. I don't know. I just... I feel like we're going to see him brandish Saber. You have to. Yeah, I think so, too. I think he's got to bust out some sort of Saber, whether it's like a new, like, proto-Jedi Saber that he found on Acto in one of the temples or one of the tombs or whether he busts out... His uh, Return of the Jedi saber. I think he's. Right, so let's continue this a little up. bit. So, what, what's something that you maybe not predict you think is going to happen? But what's something you want to see? I want to see the breakout from Snoke's facility, and I what I want to see is Leia, Ray, and Kylo all together Ooh, breaking out, <laughs> standing on a bridge of a ship, looking out the window. And then maybe that's like where the Leia just like the end of Empire, dude. I think that would be dope. But maybe like during the escape, like Leia gets hit with a blaster or something like that, and that's like the emotional send off. Like Kylo and and Ray are dragging their mother off of this facility in hopes of saving her life. I <laughs> can't handle it. <laughs> that's what I want to see, dude. I think that would be dope. Ha. <sighs> I guess I want to see. I I want to I want to see if this makes sense. I want to see why Snoke hates the Resistance as much as he does. Yeah, I mean that's a big thing. And I want I I do want more information on Snoke. I guess that's my generic in general. I I, I need. I'm not expecting. A huge backstory, but I, I want enough that he's more than just this ominous figurehead. Yeah, I agree, dude. And the way that Ryan's talking, I don't know if we're going to get that, but for them to come out and say that he has a personal vendetta against the Resistance. Right, that's what I mean. I mean, if we even get that, that's fine. I don't need to know, like, what the fuck he was doing back in the Republic days. 
Yeah. And I want to made... know why he looks the way he does, I guess. Yeah. Like, what what made him so disfigured? What put him in all this pain? Are yeah. we at least going to get that? Yeah, I, I agree. I think we should get something like that. Maybe in a conversation with Hux. Because, I mean, Hux is a character that's been completely overlooked by a lot of people in this in the lead up to episode well i think eight. the like one of the in the snoke article i mean circus pretty much said he's like yeah i, I use these two assholes like puppets yeah I they just fucking play them off each other exactly to make to make them you know do their worst essentially yeah so i want to see that's another thing i want to see hux and i want to see how hux is used in this movie particularly because it's e- to me it would be easy to not even have him in it i mean to kind I of feel like, like hux should have a beard a beard? Yeah. Why? <laughs> Why? I don't know, because there's not really ever been a bearded Imperial, or like a bad guy officer, I guess. That's true. They always do have that like clean cut, yeah, they get very that, militaristic. Yeah. That would be pretty dope. And, and he'd be rocking like a full red beard, too. Yeah, I'm like a fucking yeah. fire crotch beard. Yeah. I think that would be pretty awesome. But, uh... Yeah, I definitely want to see what his role is going to be in this film. Is it going to be like the stalwart military leader that we see from episode Well, I think seven? he's just going to be uh, like Kylo. He's someone for Snoke to kick their teeth in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sure. we, we got that clip in those Entertainment Weekly shots where it's literally another hologram of Snoke, but it's just his head. And you can tell he's literally just screaming right into Hux's face. Yeah. Probably like you, you know, you fucking loser, lost Star Killer base, and yada yada yada. Do Do you think that we could get a moment just because of how Snoke is, like where everybody turns against him, like even Hux? Hux is like, dude, you've been shitting yeah, on mean, me. It would be it would be something different for the Star Wars franchise. There, that's no doubt about it, because it's usually only been the good guys beat the bad guys. Yeah, I mean, th- in this we could have a good person turn bad. A bad person turned good. We could have the good and bad people, like the the good person and bad person go neutral. We could have a bad person go against their leader. I mean, there's a lot of shit that could happen here, and it's because of the way that this story has been written. I agree, but I'm still, I'm, I'm sticking to my guns that there's no way Ray ends up a villain. There's no fucking way. There's no way, people. No way. At the very, I, I I agree with you that like she might do some bad shit. I mean, she might like do some dark side stuff as she tries to find the balance. But there's no way that she dons a a black cloak and her no eyes way. turn the 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 Sith no the, the dark way. side. You know, there's no way they're not going to take the first Star Wars female lead heroine and make her a bad guy. She's going to cut off Kylo's head when she pulls in that saber. <laughs> <laughs> that would be I, it would be fucking awesome. I mean, it would be if they did that, everyone out there that's ever called Disney like a f- piece of scumbag piece of shit, just a, uh, you know, a fucking foo-foo, uh, just do it for making money and this that other thing. You you'd have to fucking beg forgiveness. Yeah, you'd eat those words real fast. But because that would be some fucking shit. Like, if Ray turned into a fucking badass dark side motherfucker, I mean, that would be insane. Could you imagine, like, the parental backlash? Because there's a lot of Star Wars parents out there with daughters who are like, we finally have, like, a force yeah, that, user. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, there's no way they take this innocent girl and turn her into, like, a murderous dark side uh, overlord. There's no way. To me, that would be the ultimate sign that, like, Disney has given full control over to the story group. And they're like, tell the story that you want well, to. Yeah, and th- you like need- I said, that's my point. Yeah. Anyone that hated on Disney for just churning out Star Wars shit and thinking it's vanilla, y- you'd have to shut the fuck up. Oh, yeah. But we'll see, man. Six All right. Six so, days. yeah, everyone. I mean, by the time you hear this, it's probably going to be two days, and that's going to be even more insane as I sit here thinking about it. It's like I, I can almost transport to the future and feel it now. I mean, we are close. I'm going to be in Vegas to watch it. I, I'm kind of stressed out about that. I'm not going to lie because I'm not going to be in my my home theater set up. I'm not going to know the lay of the land, but we'll get it done. We'll figure it out. Uh, I'm going to see it twice within 12 hours, you know, because why not? You have to, right, Nick? I mean... The more you see it, the more you can let all the nuances sunk in, sink oh, yeah. in so we can talk about it and explain everything to you. So here's what's going to happen, people, over the next few weeks as we celebrate the launch of The Last Jedi. 
Nick's going to have a review for you probably release day. So on the 15th, hopefully, we'll, we'll have a review on entertainmentboo.com. Depending on my situation in Vegas, we may try to do a remote podcast, Star Wars Time Show, just to talk about the film and, and what we thought. And I'm pretty much predicting the future. I'm using the force here. We're going to love it, and we're going to gush about it, and we're going to sound like two fanboys. So prepare for that. Um, and if that doesn't happen, make sure probably the Monday after release of Star Wars The Last Jedi or that Tuesday, we'll, we'll have our impression cast out for that. And then we'll be back out. We'll probably take off Christmas and then we'll be back for a show right before New Year's. And then after that, you know, we'll be back hopefully on a, on a weekly schedule doing who knows what talking Star Wars, talking pop culture. You never know. Hopefully Star Wars. But if we run out of stuff, Star Wars. We'll find something geeky to talk about. All right, my friend, anything you want to close with? Uh, no, man. I think we hit it. Hopefully after The Last Jedi is released and stuff like that, like you were saying, we, we can jump on the Han Solo hype train, see when that oh, yeah. starts fuck, to kick off. What the off. fuck am I talking about? I'm sitting here like we're not going to have anything to talk about. We got another fucking Star Wars movie potentially coming out in seven months. Six months. Fuck. Five months. Five months now. <laughs> yeah. Dude, like, I mean, Jesus. It's right so, around yeah, the Yeah, I'm an idiot. Nick's right. Stay tuned. We're, we'll be transitioning to Solo here in about two weeks. All right, my friends. As always, may the Force be with you.